Now, here is that guy. He says he goes up there and he looks out on this big old bunch of water and it scares the pants out of him. Now he doesn't know what to do. I just got to tell who telling you what you do. You just start right there. You don't run up the lake 20 miles to a stump. Like I've heard people say at the dock, I know of a stump up here 10 miles, come on. You ever catch a fish there? He's always big with it. And he takes off with a rooster tail about 20 feet long, going 10 miles to cast the one stump. You stop, you start your fishing right there. You say, well, how about I have to go up and get color? You should have looked at when you run around the lake, you should have looked at the color. And when the color was good, then that's where you should have put in the best watercolor. That was your face. So in a word, uh, you'd be looking around. I've been in areas like this where I had to go way up the lake to do it, but there was a road up there, but there's no launching route. Many times I drug my boat in where the color was good, even in the canyons, because that's the difference. And so you start right there. How do you start to find out what's there, whether there's any fish there, and anything else that you want to do? Are there any guidelines that I know that's going to tell me there's one way to do it? It's very simple. You don't have to have. I used to go to the lake and I had a rod in my hand, a five horse motor, and, and uh, my, tie, my, my gas can, and my rod in my hand, and a paper bag. I did this for years. What was in the paper bag? Spoon plugs. That's all I had. More, all this that I'm telling you about was that way that I learned. And Terry will tell you, Don Nichols day, Johnny will tell you, that those that learn without it, the depth sound and the contour maps are the best ones. They had to be. You have age today that's going to help you, but don't forget the basics. And we're talking about basics for the spoon plugger. You start right there. You start with a 500. You could start with a 400 if you want to, but I start, me, I start right there at the dock with a 500 after all these years. I do exactly what we talked about just recently. I go right there and I go right in and see what's there and I can run my contours and I'll get out a little bit deeper and check it and time I get out the deep water which is 8 to 10 feet with the 250 then I get outside of that and I hate then I get out the 15 and 12 15 feet and go straight to find what's there but if I keep my eyeballs open I don't have to go very far before I see a potential structure situation and then when I see this structure potential uh, situation I fish it I fish it that's fishing water but I start right there. I do not run off up and I don't wonder where I'm going to go. Where do I go to catch a fish? And how do you say I start right there? Here's the way I do it. I start right there and I spend half of my time going away from it and the other half coming back here. And you think about that. That's my guideline and I do. I'm not going to get in trouble way up the lake too far maybe and a storm comes and I have no place to go. And not only that, I don't have to do that. There's fish there. All I got to do is catch them. And another thing about this situation, the other guys in the tournament people, they're going like 40 miles out of sight. And here I'm got there, and I don't have all that traffic somewhere else. And they're leaving all these fish down there for me. <laughs> See, it's, you, you don't worry about it. You start right there. Now, you start right there. How much time have I got here? I'd like to give you a little story here. I'm going to tell it anyway, real slow. I'm going to say, this was in Lake Lanier next to Georgia. We got some Georgia boys in the house. And I went out there in Lake Lanier way back yonder, and it was clear down toward the dam, and it was full of brush. That whole cockeyed lake, as far as I'm concerned, was full of brush at that time. So I just quit. I just quit right quick. And I went up to, I said, I got to go up my guideline just as far as I can go up this thing, see if the inside feet cuts or something, give me some color. And I got up to Gainesville, there was looked like just about like that. There was the last, the last little boat out. Now, it didn't have all that, uh, all those uh, boat 
uh, booths and all that stuff up there. It was the, just a uh, uh, just a little old boat out there, and he had a rental boat, so I rented them. Didn't have all those those boats parked out there either. So I, I put on the 500 right there, and I started down this right-hand lane. And when I got out to the point, I saw that it looked like a buildup of a nice-looking bar, a ridge-like bar that went off at the mouth of this uh, this uh, uh, this buoy bay, yeah, the feeder stream. So I, I, I messed around that a little bit, and I found it. It was a nice bar that went off in the deep, and I, I, I only took about the. Uh, I took a pass with a 200 and, and made a couple of passes in and I put a 100 and it told me just about where I had to make the, the final pass. And so I made a final pass coming up with a 100 pretty deep and hit the end of the bar and just as I hit the end of the bar, bingo, I had a fish. By that time my boat was in here close, close to this dock because I was coming up that side. I put the fish in the boat. I didn't put him in the boat, but I threw him in the bottom boat and then I looked around and didn't have my stringer so I just threw him back in the lake. So I went out there, and another I said, well, I've got to see what's here and see where there's a casting position. So I went out there and made the pass down the bar again, and this time I'd run a little bit more line, and I was a little bit closer to the dock. By this time, I looked up, and there was two men standing on the dock, the owner and somebody else. I didn't know who he was. And so when I fought the fish, the time I got through fighting that fish, I just kept my rod on the boat and drug the fish pretty good distance. And my boat was right up close to the dock when I turned it and, and I hung the fish, you know. And, and I, when I, I was, the boat found, went just up and went against the dock and they were two standing right there. And I landed the fish right at the dock and I said, I, I caught a fish out there, uh, you all, but I didn't have a string so I threw him back, you guys want a fish? And they said, yeah, so I just slung him up on the dock. <laughs> I did one more that way. I said, boys, I gotta go. <laughs> I left. Now they're still talking about that thing, I reckon. Now I, uh, in this case, I uh, started right at the dock. And before I got out of sight, there was my fish. And so you don't have to go 40 miles up the lake. And when you see a big lake, you don't care what size it is. You start right there at the launch. You start out with your lures and keep your eyeballs open. Pretty soon you're going to find out what's there and you're going to also find out whether there's any fish there. <laughs>